Introduction A Catechism 1. Although this work is really a catechism, a familiar of instruction by question and answer, the questions have been omitted to save space. 2. The doctrine explained in these pages is the same doctrine that our Lord preached in Judea over 2,000 years ago. The Illustrations 3. Years before he began teaching his doctrine, Christ gave to all children an example of how they should attend to their catechism. As a child of twelve, he accompanied Mary and Joseph to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. The top picture on the left shows him seated in the temple in the midst of the doctors of the law, listening to them and asking questions. The gospel tells us that he astonished them with the wisdom of his answers. Luke 2, verses 46 through 47. 4. At the age of thirty, he began his journeys through Judea, expounding his doctrine. He usually preached in the synagogues where the Jews assembled for prayers, in the hills or on the seashore. The top picture on the right represents him seated in a boat on the Sea of Galilee, surrounded by his disciples, preaching to Jews from a neighboring village, who follow his teaching with rapt attention. Luke 4, 44, 5, 1 through 2. 5. After his ascension, the teaching of his doctrine continued through the apostles and bishops, priests, and deacons. The picture in the center shows Philip, a deacon, seated in a chariot next to a high-ranking official of Candace, queen of Ethiopia. He had read Holy Scripture, but was entirely unable to grasp its meaning. When Philip explained it to him, he begged to be baptized, saying, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts 8 and 27 6. Below left. The Pope teaches Christian doctrine to the world at large. On the right, a bishop proclaims the gospel to men not yet civilized. In the middle, a priest gives children a catechism lesson. Man's Destiny. 7. It is essential for all people, especially Christians, to know Christian doctrine, for without it we cannot achieve the sublime goal for which God created us. 8. God created us to know Him, love Him, and serve Him, and thereby gain eternal life. 9. To serve God we must 1. Observe His commandments. 2. Discharge faithfully the duties of our station. 3. Work for His glory by doing all the good that is in our power. 10. We must serve God firstly because He has created us for this purpose, and secondly because if we do not serve Him, we render ourselves liable to eternal damnation in hell. 11. Unfortunately, there are many who do not serve God, but attach themselves to the things of the earth, preferring themselves to God. 12. Such individuals give themselves up mainly to the pursuit of honors, to gratify their pride, to the pursuit of riches, to indulge their avarice, or pleasure, to pander to their lust and gluttony. 13. But they will fail to find happiness in such things, because the human heart has been made for God, and every earthly good, all the honors and riches and pleasures the world can give, can never satisfy it. 14. God alone can make us happy, because He alone is the sovereign good. 15. Already in this life God gives to all of those who serve Him the peace that comes from a good conscience. He watches over them in all their undertakings, consoles them in all their troubles, and showers blessings on them. 16. Perfect happiness will be ours only when we possess eternal life. Eternal, i.e., when we are face to face with God in heaven for all eternity. The Title and Sign of the Christian 17. A Christian is one who has been baptized and professes the Christian religion. 18. It is a great joy to be a Christian, for the Christian is a child of God, a brother of Jesus Christ, and has heaven as his inheritance. 19. A Christian is recognized by the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 20. The sign of the cross reminds us of the two great cardinal truths, that there is but one God in three persons, and that Jesus Christ, the Son of God made man, died on the cross to redeem us. 21. We ought to make the sign of the cross in the morning upon rising, at night upon going to bed, 
at the beginning and end of every important act, and in the presence of danger. 22. The sign of the cross made with faith and reverence removes from our path all dangers and temptations, and brings God's blessings upon us. Amen.